we are now going to move on to the debate. And this week's debate, as it's the end of the season, we haven't done it yet, we need to do it now. We are going to do our Premier League team of the season. Going from goalkeeper up to the striker positions. Uh, oh, positions. Positions. Right. We are thinking... We're not sure on the formation, right? We are. I think, I think it changes it completely for me. Four three three or four four two. He right, he wants four three three. I want four three three. Why? I want four three three as well. Joe, you you're outvoted. We're going four three three. No, no I, I think I think we just go through our teams and then go from there. Okay, so basically, goalkeeper. Let's all start. We all have a goalkeeper. Who is in goal? Jordan, start us off. Uh, so for me, I think the goalkeeper has to go to the person that conceded the least amount of oh. goals. Not the most clean sheet. I would okay. say David Hayes did see it? get the most clean sheets this season. But there are two goalkeepers that concede the least amount of goals this season, and that is Edison and Nick Pope. And I think for the the season as a whole, I think for me Nick Pope is um, is my goalkeeper in the team this season. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I touted Edison as underrated a couple of weeks ago. Was it underrated? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, and everyone laughed at me. No, I, I think we said overrated. Oh, and I and then you against argued it. against yeah, it. Yeah. And said, you know, I mean, it's conceded less goals. I know I was on about. Anyway, enough of me. Um, yeah, Nick Pope. <laughs> um, for me, I've decided to go for Alisson. Statistically, he is the goalkeeper which has prevented the most goals. And as a goalkeeper, that is your job. And he has pretty much... If they had a different keeper, any other keeper from the league, I think they'd do way worse. They don't even... I mean, they had a late push for Champions League. Without Alisson, I don't even... I think the, there's a chance they finish closer to on them. Now, he was keeping them at least... He was the only positive, consistent vibe out of Liverpool for the entire season. I mean, obviously, you've both gone for Pope, so I'm yeah, guessing yeah, with Pope. It's, Pope. A, it's a fair point, Alisson, but you're not getting ahead of Pope. Yeah, I've got a couple of like honourable mentions. He's a, be, he's a, be, like, he's oh, a better Alisson. keeper. Can we just say, as a player, he's a better keeper than Pope? Yeah. yeah, but not this season. Okay. But honourable mentions wise, Alisson is one, Edison is probably one as well. Okay. Um, but Nick Pope has to get in. All right. So are we starting right back or left back? Which side are we? Left back. We're going left back going first. Right in life, so that's how it works. Left, left, left back. back first. I think there's three players in the conversation here, but I'm just going to go with one of my own. I was about to take the badge, but then I realised <laughs> I'm wearing an Inter kit. So I'm going to go with Alexander Sinchenko. Yeah. I think he's had a phenomenal season. I think the impact he had on Arsenal. And our style of play, I mean, statistically, it doesn't really pop up that much, but just the way he enables us to move through teams, the way he uh, joins the midfield, he's impacted our style of play and enabled us to go on the title charge. So, Zinchenko's in there for me. For me, it's so hard not to... Like, I really wanted stupid man to get in there, but I don't want him to get in there more than Zinchenko. So. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Zinchenko's had a phenomenal season, arguably signing of the season, and he, yeah, he, he has just been terrific. He's, I mean, he's been one of the best players in the world this season. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to argue with Zinchenko, to be honest, because, um, I mean, it's pretty obvious that you two are going for him, so yeah. we're getting in anyway. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of, like, mentions, Zinchenko, obviously, is stupid. Yeah. And I, I've written here, um, Luke Shaw has had a fantastic season. He's proved his versatility going forward and defensively, slotting in at centre-back across the entire season. I think um, has been one of Manchester United's better players this season, so I think Luke Shaw deserves a mention, mm. but... It's clear that Zinchenko is I think in, so. Luke, Luke Shaw is, is, a, is a decent shout, obviously, with his versatility this season. One player which I also want to mention before we move on is Nathan Ake. Yes. I yes. think he's had a really impressive... No one really thought he could be in that starting lineup, but I think this season he's a big reason as to why they've won the title in that, you know, in a moment where they needed him. He was absolutely superb this season at left-back. Uh, so now let's go across the back line. Yeah. Two centre-backs at once. Should we do left centre-back first? Should we, should we do a left centre-back and then should we fit a left? Should we pick a left-footed centre-back? No, let's just pick, let's just pick, the best two look, centre just <laughs> what are your two centre-backs? Go. <laughs> Who are your two centre-backs, Jordan? Uh, my two centre-backs that I've gone for are Ruben Diaz and Botman. Um, so I think Ruben Diaz is uh, City's best defender. Um, I think he has had a fantastic season. Incredible. Uh, and Botman has been a fantastic player at Newcastle. So I think definitely gets in there as well. I think um, these two are pretty, pretty much nailed on. There's, there's a few players we could mention. So I'm, I'm expecting to hear a No, 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 let me, let me pick them first. Yeah, you guys. Okay. steal my picks for him. I'm, yeah. I'm just my eyes. honourable mentions. For him. I mean, Sven Botman for me has to get in there. Okay, he's written on. I don't think anyone's disagreeing with that. Ruben Dish though. Dish. I think. Ruben Dish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's actually closer to the pronunciation, correct? I, um, yeah. For me, Lewis Dunk is in over him. For me, it's Botman and Dunk. That's my pick. 
I don't, I don't see how Lewis Dunk doesn't get in the team. He I don't see how Lewis Dunk doesn't get in over someone who had a massive impact on their team, came in this season, and the second they went out, the team fell apart, and that is William Saliba. Yeah, for me, I go, for me, I mean, I wanted to go Gabriel as much as I can, but the point is, it's so clear to see the second Saliba left that team, the drop off was unimaginable, so I'd go Saliba, and then it's a question of who punts him, and I'd go, for, I'd go for Sven Botman alongside him. I think Botman's nailed on. Botman's nailed on. We've this all gone Botman. One. This is really difficult. Uh, so the options are Dunk, Diaz, and William Sleber. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. I'm gonna be honest. As good as a season he's had. Don't even. I I love Lewis Dunk. You know he finally got called up for England, and I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy that he finally got called up for him. However. He's had a better season than this. <laughs> Dish has been there. <laughs> dish. Why do you keep saying that? What are you calling him? Dish. <laughs> dish has been there. We'll, it's, dish has we'll been dish. Dish every single season. It's just a bit boring now. All right. Yeah. Okay. And there's plenty of other good defenders in that squad. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you can't just go. Oh, he's been amazing for so long. He just, he okay. Saliba, no. Diaz. No, no, or no. Dunk. Come on. Come on. No, I, ge- no, I genuinely think there's an argument to say that the impact that Dunk has on Brighton outweighs what Ruben Diaz has done for Man City. That was really hard to say his name. Though. Arsenal but were on re- were know, ready to I get... Ni- uh, uh, like They were on scale, on form, to get 95 points. He Saliba goes out, they get 10 points less. When did Saliba get injured? He got injured uh, early April. How many games did he miss? Like... Hold on. I think he missed I'm about just, nine exactly in the prep. Exactly, like, he, he missed nine games. How many... Like, Lewis Dunk, I'm pretty sure, played every single Premier League game. So did, did Dish as well? I don't know. Yeah, but like, he missed the running. Like, that's not, he didn't miss yeah, half like, the season. If you're going to talk about missed games... Missed the part, he missed the crucial part of the season. Like, may, uh, Saliba is a fantastic centre-back, but maybe he's going to go on to have a much better season in the future because he, he, he'll be fit for all of it. For the whole yeah, but uh, I don't think it's a case of... Um, you can't go, oh, we missed yeah, a few games. Yeah, yeah. He can't be a team of the season. <laughs> like, no, no, I if think someone I, plays less games, yes, they can. That's a, that's I, I, th- I think you can, you can't say, oh, they, they can be better in next season, but they just doesn't, don't get in this yeah, season. Because they've had, because we're talking about the team of this season. And, okay. And all, all of these players have been remarkable this season. And to be honest, I don't really care which one of them gets in because whatever happens, like, they've all had unbelievable seasons. Dunk has made, actually, Dunk has made Actually, history. if Dunk's not, let's just say Dunk doesn't get in. I'm Would you rather have Ruben Diaz? Or William Slater. Well, I think that's a, that's a pretty obvious answer. <laughs> so, but Dun- if you're going to no, compromise. Listen, just listen. Dun- like, Dunk has made history with Brighton. So, Ruben Diaz has done what Man City do every single season. And I know, that is brilliant. Well done, mate. But th- I <laughs> think that, that, That's the weirdest way I've ever seen say it's like he's you know, won the league right, ever. It's like, it's like you go, like, in three years' time, Haaland keeps finishing top goal scorer and you go, yeah. well, Haaland, Haaland's been... Harlan scored 55 goals. Harlan, in Harlan just broke season. his record, got 100 in the Prem, who cares? Right? Yeah, but he just. To be, fair, to be fair, I can imagine us talking about it like that. It would just get a bit boring. Yeah, it would. But no, but what I'm trying to say is, I think the achievement of Lewis Dunk getting Brighton into European football is better than Ruben Diaz winning the League of City. D- I think Saliba's had a better season than Dunk. Yeah. So that's an issue. Yeah. Okay, I so, th- well, if, well, it's not an issue actually, because <laughs> it's really easy to pick between, isn't it? I, th- I yeah. think Saliba is. is a better option than Dunk, yeah. I just think Dunk deserves to be in there, but if he Saliba wins, if Saliba wins... So, uh, we are decided, yeah. William... An honourable mention. <laughs> yeah. Dunk, Dunk um, Ruben Dish. You know, Ruben Diaz. Uh, I've got... Uh, Stones has had a great season as well. Another um, player which also got injured and yeah. impacted their side, well, Lissandro. Martinez, yeah, has had a fantastic season. Varane's had a brilliant season. Um, Gabriel is an underrated Gabriel, child. yeah, I, know, I wanted to mention him, but the fact that Saliba got injured... I tried to help. I tried to say, should we put a left-footed centre-back in left centre-back? <laughs> and you were like, no, no. <laughs> look, look, I want to get this debate over and done with. It's going to be let's a long one. Yeah. So let's move on. Right-back is the easiest so, position on the pitch. So, three, two, one, Trippier. Ben White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we've got to go Trippier. I think we have to go Trippier. I like, think he's part of the best defence and not only is he part of the best defence well not I don't think they were the best because obviously most clean sheets was um, no but Leeds goal conceded Leeds goal conceded Newcastle yeah and, and not only is he part of one of the best defence in the league but he's also a really good attacking outlet for them I mean I know for a fact he was absolutely class my FPL I did not drop that guy for one week he was amazing but yeah um, shame he finished like 22nd in the FPL though. yeah it's fine um, so could that, be worse could, could have been worse. But to be fair, he did change his team like five weeks in. Like 76th out of 79. Yeah, it was, oh, awful. But yeah, we'll go Honorable into... Mentions, Honorable right mentions. Back, ben, ben White. White. Pretty much that. They are uh, the only ones who I think were close. I, I, would, I would like to give an honorable mention to wan as well. I don't, I don't think he's position. near team the season, though. Are we going to get a Man United player for every single position as an honorable mention? That's what I'm wondering. Do you know what? I think, I think 
Sancho's an honourable mention. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's, let's move on to the <laughs> I think you got to move the impact Vegorst had. <laughs> let's move on to the middle. It has been a value of every position so far. <laughs> every position so far. Okay, so we're going into we are going into midfield. Yeah, you did. You His did thing. That, His yeah? thing. We're <laughs> yeah. going into midfield now, and this is where it's decided. What, what I formation? Th- I think I think we just say who is in our midfield, well, and then we well, that, well, no, it. because you can't. It's either two or three. Either way, yeah. Either way, we're going to have a three or a two-man midfield. So let's just decide on two. And then we can decide if we're going to have a free compared to who we're going to have. Basically, to wings we are going to decide, do you want a DM that means I've got a... or do you want a striker? Yeah. Well, so is everyone. <laughs> okay, so let's just pick our two centre mids or number 10s or whatever. Yeah, let's just t- okay. pick two that are definitely in the midfield. The okay. midfield. Okay, I'm going to go Odegaard. for my two, okay? Martin Odegaard and Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, they're mine too as well. Martin Odegaard and Kevin De Bruyne have to get in. John? De Bruyne, let, no, let's, let's at least big them up. You know, yeah. Odegaard's 15 Premier League goals. In it's the, the he's equaled the record of most non penalty goals by a midfielder held by Yaya Toure. Mm-hmm. Kevin De Bruyne at 16 and, and, assists. And De, Bru- and De Bruyne, I think. It's yeah. just, he, he is, I mean, Kevin De Bruyne, there's an argument for him to be. I mean, he is the best midfielder in the world at the moment. I'm sure, yeah. there's no one's over him. Pot- potentially, he's the best player in the world at the moment. You, I, I, don't think I mean, he, he, no, Haaland. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does put it, just poke it in. Um, <laughs> but. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going De Bruyne and, and Jordan. Um, my, I do have those two. My third is Rodri as well, though. Oh, I f- okay. okay, I thought you were going to go. First of all, can we just give a shout out? Ericsson's had a great season. <laughs> although, <laughs> although, <laughs> not, not Ericsson, Casemiro. Casemiro, I had a good, here's yeah. the thing. I think, well, his, right. I think his form towards the end of the season in the Premier League and also the suspensions yeah, at a I crucial guess. point in the season. Oh, but we got Salimba in. Yeah. Yeah. So Saliba missed more games than uh, Yeah, Kadimera. but yeah, it wasn't because he so it wasn't right. because he made a stupid challenge against Crystal it's, Palace, it's, though, was it? Doesn't matter. Dunk should be in. That's a ridiculous thing. Well, look, okay, fine. We're, we don't even know if we're doing. Dunk should be in. No, we don't even know if we're doing it. Look, dunk gets in fine. Casemiro is a right. very. Good. Dunk gets in Casemiro. No, <laughs> we still don't know if we're playing a DM. So you, we are agreed. Odegaard and De Bruyne. Yes. Those uh, are the but two. But I, I think I think the the two, to be honest. If I if I had to pick two, if we're going four four two, and I had to pick two, I'd go De Bruyne and Rodri. Nah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You know, he's got very. You can't ignore. Rodri. You can't yeah, ignore Martin. I'm, I'm, I'm not ignoring think him. Think about it. I'm think about it. Think about it from like just a, a different perspective. Yeah, no, I'm, no, not, no. I'm not ignoring Martin Odegaard. He's that, had a fantastic because, season. Because but we, if we're going two, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got a pick between Odegaard and Rodri. Okay, and we're I'm going. Th- okay, that's aside. Martin Odegaard's got to get in. We're playing three. Um... I'm sorry, <laughs> this guy loves Harry Kane so much, he wants to get him in. Let's be honest, that's he's exactly why. He's got 30 goals. Yeah, he has got 36 though, did he? So, there we go. Uh, right, also, can we... Kane on the wing or something. Can we also <laughs> do some honourable mentions that aren't Man United players? Mo- well, in midfield. Oh, yeah, I've got some more. Right. Kaiseido. 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 Boom. McAllister. 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 Bright, just just Brighton. Brighton's team is a great honourable mention, because none of them are going to get in, but they've had a great cracking season. Pascal Gross. I've got another Man United honourable mention. Rice. Uh, 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 Bruno Gomes, Joe Linton. Yeah, yeah. You go on. Bruno Fernandez. Oh. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, I think with Bruno Fernandez, statistically, it's not been a great season, but it seems like he's created a billion chances, think, and you've not put them yeah. away. I, th- I think um, the attacking midfield options like this, like going forward, you have De Bruyne, Odegaard, and Bruno Fernandez in as. Oi, oi! You know about next season. Mason Mal might do a great <laughs> job for you. <laughs> yeah, but there you go. Uh, I just wanted to mention. He had, he had a good season last year, to be fair. Bruno Fernandes has had a very good season. Yeah. But I think, I think the midfield three. If we are putting a DM, there was a point in the season where obviously the conversation was Casemiro, Pai, Vardy. And since then, it's just been like one got suspensions, one went off form, and the other one just decided to be the best DM in the league. And yeah, yeah Vardy has just been the best DM in the league, hands down. So, yeah, that, so we're going 4 3 four, 3. three? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are we going? I'm gonna go left wing th- first. Yep. And I'm gonna go for Gabriel Martinelli at uh, the left wing. Okay. Nearly broke the record for Brazilian uh, for a uh, goal scored by a Brazilian in the Prem in one season, equaling for me his record, 15 goals. Yeah. And actually, who are you gonna go left wing? Well, oh my god. Um, oh my god. Well, this is ridiculous. We knew that was gonna happen. Um, <laughs> it's disgusting. I <laughs> can I can I go for mine before? No, i look look, I'm very tempted to go. We know who I'm going no, for. No, I'm very tempted to go Marcus Rashford. I am. That's who you're going for, yeah? Yes, I'm okay. going for Marcus Rashford. He's the first Manchester United player to to score over thirty goals in all competitions since Van Persie. It's the Premier League it's the, team it's the season. season. Yeah, it's Premier season, League. Yeah. Right. But, uh, but it's part of it, isn't just it? Just because he's beaten your club's part of records it. doesn't mean he's had a good season. Right. I mean, he hasn't had, had a good, yeah, he's had a good. He hasn't had a bad I'm, season. I'm sorry, if Rashford doesn't get in here, this is it's ridiculous. Rashford is. Mm. I think Rashford is 
like the front I think the front three is pretty nailed on the entire front three is pretty nailed on and that front three has Rashford on the left hand side Ashley do you want to be a sneaky idiot. little boy well it's difficult Martinelli is no I'm not going to do I'm not no, I'm going to work out in my head before I come Martinelli is the some... biggest honourable mention that I could give but no, I'm yeah, sorry no, just, could we put Martinelli up front no, um, Did you honestly I'm just consider whether sorry. or not? Okay, he can't I'm beat sorry. Rashford. Let's see if he beats Haaland. <laughs> Jesus Christ! 15 goals. Rashford 17 goals. I'm sorry. There's two so- goals really decided so- position. So- Isaac. That's what I'm saying. Ash- Ash- Ashley, no, let's uh, let's not take the mick here. No. I'm going on the Premier League comparison stats let's, here right now. Let's not take the mick here. If we go, no, oh my God. This who has the more goals or assists? This is ridiculous. Let's wait for him to find out. So, this season, oh, that's. Not right. You've got 15 goals. Yeah, 15. I don't know why, but it said 13 there for a second. This is, this is actually ridiculous. The, fa- the fact that this is, okay, this is even so in question is ridiculous. Here's I'm the sorry. thing. They, Martin only has played one more game. He's got less goals. He's got the same amount of assists. Oh, so actually, it is, it is two more for Rashford. So I will go Rashford. Yes. Rashford goes in at left that oh, That's a very a fair way. That's a very fair way of putting it. The fact it. that no, no, there was even a debate, a debate that's gone on for this long. There should be a debate. No, okay, yeah, right. Rashford gets in. Yes. yes. And the rest and, of the front And Martin and, and Martin and got more yellow cards as well, which is unfair. But yeah, should now... Up, say the front three okay, because it's obvious. What conversation? Are we having a conversation here or are we just going to say, okay, so Haaland up front. Honourable mention, Harry Kane. Okay. Just Sorry. missing out. Right. So, right. He's the first it. name on the bench. Harry Kane has got many golden boots, but the two seasons he's got 30 goals. He's missed out. All right, that's just... Maybe next year, Harry. Maybe next year. Yeah, depends on if he decides to make a good transfer choice or not. Let, but, you let's, know. let's honourably mention Ivan Tony and Callum Wilson. Yes. Yeah, yes. That, they've obviously had a great season. Uh, Jesus, if he stayed fit. No, I'm joking. He, it was okay. He had an okay season. Obviously, the odds were pretty... Decent in Ivan Tony's favour. Um, do you get it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he has a gambling problem. Yeah, let's laugh at that, Ashley. Um, <laughs> you awful man. But Harlan well, is obviously. Harlan isn't actually in score. There's, goals, I've the never, there's never been a more can, obvious can choice. Can we just say, right? Can we just go back to the fact that we're saying, right, Harlan, obvious choice, easy. Go back to our. <laughs> no, signings no, of the no, 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 no. Here's the thing not just signings of the season. I watched through the prediction video, right? And obviously, when I made the new one, I cut things out because I had to make it quicker. I, I, it would have been like 60 minutes if I kept all the original footage. You. <laughs> in the, I did leave your bit. You go, Harland. I watched. You judged all of your Man City predictions off of the Community Shield. You went, Liverpool are going to win the league. They won the Community Shield. <laughs> Nunez scored. He's going to have a great season. Harland, you missed Sid, didn't he? I'm not convinced. <laughs> and then you, you, you go positive. You go, I think Harland's going to have a good season. He's not going to set the world alight. I think I think you get 15 to 20 goals. You yeah. go, he's going to have an okay season. You predicted, <laughs> your prediction for Haaland was like my prediction for Jesus. If you wanted, like, and then me, I didn't give any specific number. I was smart. I just went, you know what? He's going to bang the goals in. That could be, that could mean anything. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> so the main, the main conclusion from that is, is that I'm a genius. You're a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're the line. Exactly. I've already told him where I'm going to predict Arsenal purely because it's the safest thing I can do. Exactly, because <laughs> here's the thing. If I so don't get, if I, if I don't get, I know. Come on, Saka, Saka, yeah. Saka's Saka's right wing. Saka right wing, yeah? yeah? No. You're not. You're right. Yeah, of it's course. Obvious, like. Bukai Saka, first player in the league to get double figures on both. Awesome season. Also, for a winger, I wanted to men- I want to mention um, Trossard, actually. I think, oh, yeah. generally. 12, 12 assists. Jo- joint second in the league. For assists. Also, here's the weirdest thing. When he was at, he obviously joined half through the season. Uh, at Brighton, he had seven goals and two assists, and then at Arsenal, he had uh, I think ten or eleven. He had like eleven assists and one goal. So it was like he completely reversed the output, and he's had he's had an incredible season. Are we doing a manager? Because I've written a manager down. Yeah, I'm down for I didn't have a manager down, but pff, screw it, go for it. I Are you putting anyone down? The uh, Zerbi. Yeah, well, that's a season. very I th- I very think, fair I think shout. The Zerbi has been the most consistent. Manager in the league this season. You think? Yes. I, I don't. He's my manager of the season as well. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. What are you going to say then? He's my manager of the season as well. But you're wrong. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what was your butt? We there? are a little bit towards the end of the season. They lost like five to Everton and then 
I think it's five under Newcastle as well. I thought. Yeah. Uh, there was one game in between those games, and it was a three 0 win at the Emirates. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> uh, they've got good results against the the big six. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they've yeah. been fantastic all, all season. I think they've and beaten I think Liverpool twice, Chelsea twice. They've done double over as well. They didn't do double over Liverpool. I uh, think they, drew, they drew. They drew no, I think if they beat twice in the FA Cup. I think if Graham Potter stayed at Brighton, he, Brighton still wouldn't be in this. No, this position. I mean he wasn't playing the same system. He wasn't giving players like Matoma minutes know. just yet. And the Zerbi just kind of came in and hit the accelerate button on their project exactly. a bit. And Graham Potter doesn't have that that pizzazz that De Zerbi has. He's a bit too. Graham, Graham Potter's too nice. De Zerbi, yeah. he's got the nice, style. Yeah. He's got the beard. He's got the aggro. It's lovely. Oh, there's, a, there's obviously some honourable mentions, you know. Pep, Arteta, Pep, Arteta, Arteta and, uh, and, and Eddie, Eddie Howe. Howe. Eddie Howe. And, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, Gary, Gary O'Neill? Is that, uh, is that his name? Yeah, I think so. I think that's his name. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> oh, no, O'Neill oh, deserves a shout because you know what? He came in as an interim and then like got a couple of shots and they went, Do you know what? Let's give him the job. And usually when you give an interim the job, I think you're lazy and you can't be asked to figure out who your next manager is. And do you know what? He kept them up, and they were safe for about a few weeks to go. You know, well, not mathematically, but like they'd picked up around 40, and that's a pretty good season form of considering we all had them rock bottom because they hadn't had a good transfer window, and they've done quite well. And with uh, most of those players being in their squad last season, you know, it's, it's relatively quality. But you know, and at the end of the day, that's the team of the season. at the end of the day, we are going to serve each manager.